To begin today's show, I'll be joined by my American Medicine Today radio co-host, Ethan Euchre. Thanks, Kimberly. Today we'll visit Dr. Pat Ricaldi, a craniofacial specialist who blends surgery, dentistry, and artistry to make incredible transformations to her patients' appearance and their outlook on life. Thanks for having us, Dr. Ricaldi. Why don't you tell us more about the important work you do? Thanks for having me. Here at the Florida Craniofacial Institute, our goal is to help children who are born with facial differences. And that could be cleft lip and palate, it could be craniofacial syndromes, craniosynostosis, a whole host of various anomalies. And the idea is to try to help them live normal lives without the reminder of their craniofacial difference. I think it's important too, Kimberly, mm -hmm. to sort of define for the layperson mm -hmm. what exactly, I mean, we've all pretty much heard of cleft yes. lips, and mm -hmm. uh, but the cleft palate is the bone, right? The roof of your mouth. So a cleft lip. Why don't you just kind of break down what some of these uh, deformities are that um, some people are born with? Sure, I'd be happy to. So one in 700 babies in America are born with a cleft lip or palate. And what that means, when I describe this to parents, what I explain to them is we all actually begin with a cleft lip and palate in utero because our faces begin formation in several parts. And when those parts of the face come around and fuse, the cleft obliterates. But in some patients, it doesn't obliterate. And so they're left with these defects that connect the mouth to the nose. Um, and that is what a cleft lip and a palate is. And we don't know what causes these? Are they genetic? Is so it something that happens in utero? Oftentimes we don't know what causes it. It's what we call multifactorial, which basically means we, we don't know. There are some genetic causes. There are several genetic tests that can be done to try to link uh, family transmission of the disease. But oftentimes these tests are, are, are negative or your insurance doesn't pay for it. So it's hard to get the testing. With the cleft palate though, what are some of the functions when people suffer with it that they're unable to do? And why is it so important for them to come in and seek treatment? So if someone's born with a cleft palate, they cannot create suction in the mouth. The baby can't suck. And of course, feeding is significantly impaired, um, especially a mom who might try to breastfeed. It can be very difficult because the, the baby looks like they're doing the right job. The jaws are moving, the cheeks are puckering, and things are moving, but they can't suck. They can't express milk. So they have to be fed with specialized bottle systems. In addition, as they get older, they'll have speech problems and they won't be able to create speech sounds properly, typically leaving them with very hypernasal speech sounds. And you were telling us also um, one of the most extreme before and afters that Kimberly and I saw, um, it was one of the children that had looked like something that came out yes. down over Acephal. her eyes. That child was born with an encephalocele, which means that the skull base, as it was forming, it's supposed to form bone to separate the brain from the face. And in that child, uh, it did not. So portions of the brain and a lot of the brain fluid had come through the face and developed a horrific uh, deformity. Uh, it was a life-threatening event because the child was only 10 days old when we took her to surgery. She wasn't able to feed. She, it, was, it was pushing on her nose and she wasn't breathing. Uh, it certainly would have led to blindness as well. You know, we were discussing off camera and I want to mention on here, um, I know you're affiliated um, with St. Joseph's Hospital and you're the director of, uh, what is it, the craniofacial team? team. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great that they're able to help you and you can work in conjunction with them, but are you privately funded as well if somebody's watching right now and they would like to help uh, further uh, what you do, how could they help? Thanks for bringing that up. We are always looking for donations. We actually do have a nonprofit uh, organization to accept donations for people who uh, are more fortunate to help the less fortunate. The reality is that the medical services are typically covered through insurance um, uh, insurance plans, but there's a lot that those plans don't take into consideration or won't cover. For example, the specialized bottles and feeding mechanisms, or for example, transportation to the hospital and clinic. Some of these families don't have money for gas. Um, sometimes it's a matter of us helping to arrange social services or psychological evaluations, which again, sometimes insurance plans overlook. So we do have fundraising events continually to try to help raise money to offset some of these costs. I wanted to ask you, what, um, what is the success rate like for um, the majority? I'm sure you run into complications with some of these being that they're, mm -hmm. I mean, they're major procedures. Yes. You know, so um, for the most part, is it, from a parent's perspective, what, 
How do you, how high do you set their expectations when they go into some of these surgeries? Well, that's the most rewarding part of it. It's a surgery that technically is very challenging, but if executed properly, the results are, are astounding. And typically we have very few complications. And it's so rewarding to monitor these people over time and really watch the development and how they change and how it really affects their self-esteem and, and whatnot. Well, you do great work and um, you we're know. We're gonna see some of the patients. Yeah, we're gonna talk to, uh, to some of your patients that you brought in, you were kind enough mm -hmm. to, to let us talk to today, and uh, I'm sure we'll see some before and afters and, and see some of the great work that Dr. Pat Ricaldi does. This is Samuel. And we are the Grays. Samuel was born with a unilateral cleft lip and palate. Uh, whenever he would drink from a bottle, he had to have a special nipple that would go to the back of his mouth so he wouldn't choke and milk would go in the back of his mouth and go back into his airways. It's, it's very frustrating. I mean, to see your child go through something like that and there's nothing that you can do is just, well, if I had hair, I'd pull it out. When we were still pregnant with Samuel, that's when we went and came here actually to Dr. Ricaldi's office and met with her and she reassured us that, hey, not a big deal. I do these kind of things all the time. We'll go ahead and we'll, you know, do his surgery. At three months, she did his lip repair and it was phenomenal. He bounced it back so quickly within hours. He was, he I mean, play. within hours he was playing. We were like, we're ready to go to home tonight. Like he was like a champ. Most people will look at him and can't even tell that he ever had a cleft lip or palate or had surgery he is so young. It's meant the world. He eats like a regular child. I mean, he, we'll be at the dinner table. He'll be grabbing the uh, asparagus off my plate and just shove it right in his mouth, start chewing it up and he, He's just a regular boy. Hi. When we first found out, uh, it was we we were having the upper level ultrasound in order because he was like some lab value came up where uh, he might have Downs, and so they were checking for the signs of Downs in the ultrasound, and they found the cleft lip. We were trying to ask our uh, providers and. It, there it wasn't a whole lot of direction they gave us until somebody directed us to Dr. Ricaldi and the cleft team at St. Joe's and they were a wealth of comfort and information. So he has had two surgeries so far, uh, one for the lip which was around three months and uh, one for the palate uh, around 10 months. Oh yeah, he's great. Um, looking at him, most people look at Luke and they, they're, they're like I would never would have guessed he had a cleft by looking at him. His surgery is so beautifully done. They've been amazing. They really have. It's been a full service team, and and I I really can't thank them enough. Andon was um, diagnosed with Treacher Collins syndrome. It wasn't. We didn't know when he was born. He was born with a cleft lip and cleft palate, and so it took a few times of seeing a genetic doctor to find out, but. The ge genetic diagnosis is Treacher Collins syndrome. Dr. Caldi has done um, an otoplasty on his ears, as well as cheek bone grafting and jaw bo bone grafting. She took some bone out of his hip to fill in where he was missing on his jawline, and took some of the bone off of his skull layers and strengthened his cheekbones here. Four surgeries, feel a little nervous because I just don't like surgeries in my body. After surgery, I feel like, well, I did it awesome. Yeah, honestly, amazing. We, um, she was part of the team that he was born into, where, where we live in Orlando. And she moved to Tampa when he was about three or four, but we really trusted her opinion and the way that she went about helping us make decisions for Andon. So we have always made the drive. We even moved out of state at one point when he was seven and flew back home to be with her to help us make some decisions regarding his jawline. And so we're very thankful for her, for her direction, um, the care that she has taken with him and with our family. So we're, we're truly grateful for her. I think that she's helped us so much and it's like, she can like do all this for us and it's like so amazing how she does this and it's like it's, it's like really amazing. Very quickly, just something about her um, knowledge and just something about something about her just told us we knew that we wanted to be with her and just stay with her. Wherever she went, we were we were gonna follow. Maybe feel like she just um, made me feel much, much better in my life and Make me feel more confident in God because she does these changes. 
and like she puts me more into God. All right, Dr. Pat Ricaldi of the Florida Cranial Facial Institute. Thanks for joining us on American Medicine Today. Take Thanks care. for having me.